Now for the news at 10 with Hugh Janus and Warrington Ramsbottom. <laughs> hardly any news around at the moment, so we're going to bring you a special, exclusive report on how severe water shortages are affecting the North African country of Mali and what charities are doing to combat the humanitarian crisis there. Hello, good evening. Severe water shortages are strongly affecting the people of Mali in Northern Africa and charities such as Water Aid are strongly urging people to help tackle this serious issue. We now go over to our special correspondent, Quentin Deodorf, in Mali for this exclusive report. I'm here in Mali. Irregular rainfall and political instability have left communities in Mali without basic services such as a water supply and toilets, leading to serious health impacts. It is raining now, but I can assure you that this is very, very unusual. Let's look at the stats. 4.9 million people in Mali don't have access to safe water. That's over a third of the population. Over 11.6 million people don't have access to adequate sanitation in Mali. That's nearly four-fifths of the population. And 15,000 children a year die from diarrhoea caused by unsafe water and poor sanitation. Leading to one in five children dying before the age of five. Work is hard to find, and many people lack a basic education. Even when employment opportunities are available in agriculture or fishing, there is little time to study after walking long distances for water. So what has the West actually been doing to help the people of Mali? Well, many charities have been working in Mali to provide people with access to clean water and sanitation. And I've come to the headquarters of one of the biggest. A spokesperson from Water Aid has agreed to speak to us. And so I asked them the question, what actually is Water Aid? <laughs> water Aid is an international non-government organization dedicated exclusively to the provision of safe, domestic water, sanitation and hygiene education to the world's poorest people. Water Aid has been working in Mali since 2000. Over the last decade we've worked with local partners and influenced decision makers to help more than 205,000 people across Mali get access to safe water and more than 208,000 people get access to safe sanitation. We support communities in urban areas to construct communal tap stands and carry out repairs where necessary. In rural areas, villages are taught to deepen and protect their hand dug wells against contamination. And we continue to raise awareness of the vital importance of good hygiene and toilets. We work with women and marginalised groups in particular to ensure that our efforts benefit those most in need. And in Mali last year, we reached 43,000 people with safe water and 39,000 people with improved sanitation. Thanks, Cecil. But what are your views on water aid in Mali? And what do you actually do? Well, me and myself, 
I go out and educate all the local people about safe sanitation and hygiene and everything. They all know me because of my hat. They say, oh, here's Cecil with his hat. <laughs> That's me. But on a serious note, it's really worth the general public just getting behind water and helping these poor people in Mali. All you need to do is just donate, whether it's big or small, at www. What about the Marleyans themselves? How do they actually benefit from water aid? We were able to get an interview with one man, but because of political instability in the country, he asked us not to show his face. Water aid were lifesavers for me. They helped us create a rope pump, which my brother and I operate to access clean water for our village. And now I know how to properly dispose of poo. Beforehand, we had to walk for two hours to get dirty water, and the village stank of sewage. Children were dying, but now everything is much better. But how sustainable is water aid? I pose this question to Cecil. Oh, sustainability? Oh no, that's not me. That's uh, them up top. I'm not answering that. <laughs> As you can see, not the most helpful answer. Now the water trade methods are sustainable as they're socially sustainable as if people are given cleaner water to get to then less people will die and so there'll be more people alive which will also be economically sustainable as Mali will have a larger workforce. They're also economically sustainable in the long term as people are not being given water they've been given access to water and education which means they will not be dependent on foreign aid. However, these methods are socially and economically unsustainable as well. For example, if the pump were to break, who would be able to fix it? The local people would have to wait until an international expert from WaterAid could get in to fix their pump. And also, how far would people actually have to go to get access to this clean water supply? Maybe some people would have to go so far that they'd actually rather use their own dirty water supply. All these questions need to be answered by WaterAid. And of course, the key problem is, what if this water supply eventually runs out? It would start dwindling and then people would be left scrabbling amongst each other trying to find the last precious drops of clean water and then when it eventually goes people in Mali may possibly be left worse off than they were originally as they will have no water whatsoever which means water aid's efforts will not be sustainable in the long term however for now it looks as though hope is beginning to return to some parts of deprived Mali Quentin Deodor BBC News, Marley. Well, that's all from us here in the studio. Time now for the news where you are. Tonight on Look Now.